Hi, in this video we're going to show you uh, a few alternative ways of uh, doing some of the things that we've achieved in previous videos. In previous videos we've uh, done things like um, validation to stop um, people um, leaving a text box blank. We've um, stopped them entering things that are other than numbers so letters, we stop them entering letters and we stop them um, submitting um, if they haven't entered a certain amount of uh, numbers or a certain amount of characters. Uh, and we can achieve all those things in uh, different ways and maybe sometimes more gracious and sophisticated ways. Visual Basic will offer alternative ways of doing things so we'll have a look at some of those things in this video. Um, I've got some different code here maybe slightly more code um, but in the long run uh, I think could make for a better uh, a more gracious application if we run it this time one thing you might notice is that the button that executes code is actually what is called disabled it is greyed out if we click on it or well, we can't click on it basically nothing happens okay um, that button in this application will only become enabled and we can only use it when the right amount of um, digits is entered into the text box there. So if I press 1 it's still disabled, if I press 2 it's still disabled, 3 still disabled, hit 4, hit our fourth number and it becomes enabled. So how does that happen? Well, before we've double clicked on the uh, command button to be able to put some code in, um, but you can do that for other controls, it's not just um, command buttons that you can add code to. We can add code to text boxes. If I draw a new text box on here and double clicked on it, it would take me to the change event of that text box. So any code that's in here will be fired if somebody changes the value that's in that text box. So that line should be uh, executed when I uh, change the value that's in the text box. Let's try it. So it says text one at the moment. If I just put another one onto the end, uh, I get the code that's executed that I expected. Just going to get rid of that. Um, there is more than one event than just change, though. If I double click on my existing text box, uh, it does take me to the change event, but most Visual Basic 6 controls have more than one um, event. Let's have several. Um, so there's things like um, got focus. So when the text box has focus, it's actually been clicked in. You can ask it to do something. Uh, when it's been double clicked in, when somebody drags over it. An important one might be key press, when somebody actually presses a key whilst they're inside that text box. Um, but the uh, change event is the one I'm interested in, first of all. And uh, it's got a variable that retrieves the value from the text box. We then check that variable for its length and whilst its length is 4 um, or if its length is 4 then we enable our command button. We say command encode which is our button dot enabled equals true otherwise dot enabled equals false. So um, we've Disable the button until somebody enters four digits with that piece of code there. So that's quite nifty and um, might add for a better user interface. I'll let you decide that one. What else does my new improved application do? Well, at the moment, I am pressing buttons that are not numbers on the keyboard and nothing is going into the text box. If I hit numbers, it's fine up to four of course um, but hitting letters nothing happens so how is that handled well I mentioned before there is the key press event for the text box as well and here's the code for that incidentally if we want to isolate some code so we can only see the code for a particular sub procedure on the screen at once you can use this button here okay and it will just show us only the code that we want to see only the procedure that we want to see and you can get everything back again if you click there. So the key press event. Um, the key press event always comes up with, in brackets afterwards, key ASCII as integer. 
and um, you can use that value key ASCII um, to check which key has been pressed. Um, all keys have numbers assigned to them that's on your keyboard so if we say if key ASCII is less than 48 or is greater than 57 I know that those particular codes just by looking them up on the internet are not numbers and I've even commented about it here so um, what we do at that point is with our text box we lock it so the key that we pressed the value for that key does not go into our text box and of course we've got the alternative if it is not less than 48 or and is less than 57 then we want the value to go in so we uh, unlock the text box there's a couple of caveats to uh, those numbers because we always want to want to allow our backspace button and our del button and del that's a, there's a mistake in the comment there del is not um, 8 it's 127 so we're allowing if key ASCII is 8 or 127 then unlock the text box so that's quite clever I like that what else does this application do well what I did there was I went to my form and I just double clicked on the form instead of a control I double clicked on the form itself and that takes me to the form load event which is really useful because your form load event you can set up your application in Visual Basic Code to uh, look or do what you want at the beginning as the form loads so this event happens right at the beginning if I put a breakpoint on before the form even appears on the screen it's doing these things and what we're doing is instead of using the properties window to set the max length of our text box we're doing it in code here and then um, the next line is basically disabling our command button so we're doing these things at runtime rather than at design time so some alternative ways to achieve uh, validation there and maybe an improved user interface.